In 1880, America was a developing and recovering country in the need for a booming economy. A man looking to become one of the biggest figures was soon going to propel the economy into a much higher stature. His brilliance in business led to one of the largest companies of the Gilded Age. A man who brought America to the Northwest. A man who spread America's beauty to each person in the country. The railroad that introduced tourists to the Western world and expanded the freedom and liberty of America. As a boy from Guelph, Canada, James J. Hill had a hard-working mentality. Hill looked for an opportunity to excel and become a large business owner in America. After moving to St. Paul, he saw the opportunity to jump into the railroad business in one of the Midwest's largest transportation centers. Because of the easy access to water transportation and the rising of railroads, Hill pursued his desire to become great by taking advantage of these resources. The Civil War established one whole united country. This allowed for the government to fulfill manifest destiny left by generations prior to 1865. The railroads already made it so the Homestead Act could be used effectively by cultivating the West before the turn of the century. St. Paul had a railroad that went up the Red River Valley into Manitoba. When Hill came to St. Paul, he found a spot to work there where he learned the basics of how railroads worked and how to strategically create a dominant business. Hill and the other future owners of the company all found jobs and worked to become successful railroad barons. In the 1870s, the railroad fell back and was not doing well. This resulted in Hill, Norman Kitson, George Steffen, and Donald Smith to purchase the company. They made prices for shipping of lumber cheaper, causing more revenue over time, and allowed for a large railroad to expand and dominate the Northwest. Similar to many other railroad companies during the late 1800s, the Great Northern Railway was responsible for transporting cotton, flour, and metals amongst the Northwestern and Midwestern parts of America. Many people used the railroad as a source of transportation. As a result of people being brought throughout the Midwest, towns and communities in these parts of America were able to prosper significantly. Amongst the people being transported were immigrants. The arrival of U European immigrants to various destinations amongst the Great Northern Railway routes resulted in a sudden boom in agriculture. Many farms were started by Eastern European immigrants who had minimal knowledge of farming in West American climates. The Chinese population was very high amongst the immigrants who moved via the Great Northern Railway. Unlike many other immigrants aboard the trains, Chinese immigrants became laborers for the railway company. As the railway spread further west, there is more of an opportunity for crop diversification. As a result of the railroad, farming as a whole improved significantly. To be specific, the owner of the railroad, James J. Hill, advocated for one of the first threshing machines. Threshing machines were responsible for separating wheat and other crops from their straw. This caused more crops to be made efficiently so that more could be sent out on the railroad towards the west. As a result, this form of agriculture was able to expand rapidly. Hill taught farmers new methods and imported cattle so that there would be more things to be transported on his trains. While this all took place, the railroad still expanded into the Iron Range of North Minnesota and during the 20s and 30s the output of ore was great and allowed for even more transportation. This was very influential as the west coast was still developed, especially Seattle as only a few decades before they suffered a large fire. The ore and crops sent out to the Midwest exponentially helped progress suburban cities and even major cities like Seattle. The effects left behind by James J. Hill led his son to develop a strong agricultural and mineral department for development. This still lives on today as there are many bays on Lake Superior owned by the Great Northern that transport ores. The department played a large role in the development of the railway as they would create traffic from the people settling near the railway. 
This genius plan of business made the western frontier a popular place that was bound by quick industrialization. The Great Northern Railroad was well known for its luxury trains, a new development in the train industry during the early 1900s. They tapped in to the frontier of train luxury and produced trains that were known for their grandeur and magnificence. The Great Northern Railroad provided riders with the utmost comfort. In fact, many people considered the passenger cars as luxury hotels on wheels. One of the most luxurious trains of the Great Northern Railway was the Empire Builder. The Empire Builder was the company's flagship train. It began service in 1929 and serviced from Seattle to Chicago. Not only did the Empire Builder transport people, but it also transported large amounts of steel, a crucial metal for many different industries during the mid-1900s. The expansion towards the west brought many new environmental sites, mainly through Glacier National Park. The Great Northern Railway established hotels all across Glacier National Park, creating an attractive site for people to view what had been untouched in the years prior. The new idea of tourism was very popular amongst people. To be specific, the idea of seeing things that hadn't been industrialized. Tourism was a very beneficial source of income for the company as it brought more and more people to ride their trains, which resulted in a large number of people staying in the railway's hotels. The many Glacier, Glacier Park, and Lake McDonald Lodges were the places that the Great Northern Oge owned to begin this empire involving the Northwest realm of tourism. The evolution of what could be done with the railroad separates the Great Northern Railway from other companies in the industry. They encourage people to travel to new places and see all the things the country has to offer, leading to new establishment and immigration of the west coast of the country to places like Seattle and Montana. Instead of focusing on bringing passengers city to city, the Great Northern brought people to specific landmarks that were new and entertaining. This was a new passageway into the frontier of entertainment and travel, as there was now a new purpose to vacation. The Native American people of these lands were harmed and evicted by the stations, railroads, and people settling in Montana, especially in Glacier National Park. Glacier was mainly occupied by the Blackfeet Nation. This is one of the oldest and largest nations in America. When Glacier National Park became a popular location, the nation was put onto a reserve on the east side of the park. This did not allow for much roaming and hunting, a very important part of their lifestyle. Throughout many railroad stations, there was a tradition to exit the train to the park to be welcomed by somebody who was dressed as a stereotypical Native American. A major part of the business was that because the land being explored has always been the Native peoples, they just assumed they could take it. The Homestead Act did a similar thing but was noticed at a national level. The railroad crossed the frontier between Indian and white settled lands, pushing the act to be widely used. This relates to the killing of many bison and long-lasting effect on lifestyle and heritage of the Blackfeet Nation. The native population of many different tribes and nations was altered by the expansion of the railroad, as many buffalo were slaughtered, and even got to the point where many natives were being killed. Land they were placed on was there to own, but the nation was previously spread out over a large sum of area, bigger and with more resources needed than the one given to them. This wasn't up to the railway, the railway did interfere with hunting patterns and the nomadic lifestyle. The Great Northern Railway was a pivotal instrument in the frontier of tourism, technology, and transportation. It advocated for the new development of tourism by establishing hotels. It pushed technology and agriculture by producing new systems of farming and new methods of building railroads. The Great Northern Railroad also emphasized the new idea of creating landmarks that amplify the use of their railroad. Many frontiers were explored and conquered by the Great Northern Railway, causing it to be a pivotal piece in explaining the frontiers of westward movement.